This is Russell Fagan, a.k.a. Sinistro Rifleman, and I'm continuing the InRange TV American Made Red Dot series with the Leopold Delta Point Pro. This is a used demo unit that Leopold provided for us to use for this video. In the box, we have the Delta Point Pro itself, a rubber cover, Allen wrenches, and a Torx wrench to secure the optic to its mount, instruction manual, and there is a single CR2032 battery. The Delta Point Pro has perhaps the easiest battery installation out of any red dot that I've used. You just pop the cap open, push it down in there, and then close the latch. And then when you open it back up, the battery is magnetized to the top of the cover of the battery compartment. Now I've used Delta Point Pros on handguns for a number of years. I've had very good luck with them in that role. And if they survive on a handgun, they should survive just fine on a carbine, which is what we're going to be doing in this video. There are two models of the Delta Point Pro. The first is the 7.5 MOA Triangle model from which the Delta Point derives its name. And the second is the 2.5 MOA Dot. In this video, I'll be testing the 2.5 MOA Dot. I have used the 7.5 MOA triangle on a shotgun before. I zeroed the tip of the triangle at 50 yards with slugs, then used the whole triangle for birdshot or buckshot up close. But when I was using the Delta Point Pros on handguns, I still preferred the 2.5 MOA dot on those for precision purposes. So for this video, I'm going to be using the 2.5 MOA dot mounted to the carbine because I think its smaller size lends itself better to that application. This center button on the Delta Point Pro is both its power switch to turn it on and off and its brightness adjustment. So if it were off, which I'll turn it off now by holding down the button, All right, it's off, I would turn it on by tapping it once and it'll go back to the last power setting it was on. There is no up and down, you have to just click through and you'll see when it gets to the upper end, it's going to blink. Now it's going to go back down every time I click it. And then when I reach the end, it'll blink again and then come back up. All right, there it starts to come back visible again. And then we're at maximum setting. The lower settings are visible looking through it with my naked eye, but they're not showing up on the camera for some reason, perhaps due to the way the dot is projected onto the lens. When the battery is low, the dot will blink 10 times and you'll still have a couple hours of usable battery life when that happens. But the good thing is because the battery is so easy to change, you can carry plenty of extra CR2032s with you and change it out as needed. The bottom of the Leopold Delta Point Pro is made to interface with a variety of mounts. This one is available from Leopold itself. You can see there's two recoil lugs on the mount that interface with the holes in the bottom of the sight. So I'm going to set that down on there, make sure it's fully seated. And then I'm going to install the screws that come with Loctite already on the threads. The instruction manual says to only use 25 inch pounds of force on this, but an Allen style Torx wrench is included. So I'm just going to hand tighten each one down and use my normal one finger method for tightening the screws to make sure they don't get over torqued. So if I can't move it with my thumb any longer, that means it's torqued enough. And as usual, I'm going to witness mark the screws to make sure they stay in place. One feature I want to point out here is this 
plate on the back is what you would remove if you were installing the Delta Point Pro on a handgun and wanted to install the rear iron sight module that you'll see me use on some of my pistols. I mounted the DPP to one of my K15 action carbines and zeroed it at 50 yards. The adjustments on the DPP are in 1 MOA increments, which is opposed to most of the other red dots we're testing that are 1 half or 1 quarter MOA increments. Sometimes with 1 MOA increments, you'll end up having the dot straddle either side of your point of impact and you can't get the zero quite where you want it to be. But in this case, I didn't have any problem getting it zeroed exactly where I wanted it at 50 yards. The open design of the DPP means that there's very little occluding the shooter's vision, especially when you're shooting with both eyes open, and it's very easy to transition rapidly from target to target. The liability of this open emitter design, though, is if any water or moisture or humidity gets on the inside of the lens, it can be impossible to see the dot and the sight becomes unusable. This is something that's unlikely to occur in Arizona where I live, but environmental factors should be a consideration depending on your intended use of this optic. I have used the DPP at matches where it was raining and it doesn't immediately become unusable, but you will want to take care to mitigate its exposure to the elements. The dot is clear enough that I am easily able to make hits on this Ipsic size steel at 200 yards. The small size of the DPP means that it weighs in at only four ounces with this mount. The downside is that the smaller lens size means that it takes a more precise cheek position to get behind the sight and see the dot, particularly when transitioning shoulder to shoulders like this. So nothing is free. That slower acquisition of the sight itself is something you may want to consider. All right, so this is the Delta Point Pro parallax test. I'm going to put two shots into the center white dot, then I'm going to bias the dot around the reticle and I'll let you know. I am wearing this mask because the flies out here are horrendous and it sucks. All right, those are the two center shots. Top of the reticle, top of the glass. Bottom of the glass. Left side of the glass. Right side of the glass. I'm gonna start with two rounds of the center. All right, now biasing towards the top. Bottom. Right. And left. All right, we'll go down range and check it out. All right, so with my target, with the Delta Point Pro, I mean, there's a little bit of deviation there, but that's deviation of just general MOA and shooter. I'm pretty much all in the dot. I don't think that I have any parallax issues with this at all. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a pass. Yeah, I don't think it was substantial for me either, you know, and uh, half the problem with shooting out here in the desert is we got all these flies buzzing around and the, the, the sweat running in your eyes. So it was all within, you know, about the three inch circle of the, the white dot for both of us, so. Say it's acceptable. Yeah, Delta Point Pro passes the parallax test. All right, well, the Delta Point Pro, which we've actually had an extensive experience with on our pistols. Yeah, I've been using it on a pistol since 2016. I also used them on uh, shotguns as well, and they've all held up great for me in those applications. Yeah, we've heard otherwise. We've heard people talk about RMR versus Delta Point, and that's a debate that'll go on forever, like AR-15 versus AK. All I can say is the RMR-1 had failures for me. I've heard the rmr is fine. Doesn't matter, the Delta Point Pro for me on my pistol never had an issue. Right. So that's all I can tell you. We do know, and we've been told, and I've never experienced it, but I'm sure it's the case, that the Delta Point's particularly susceptible to rain conditions because it is an open emitter, right? Right. Um, so, but that said, interestingly, we've now tested the Freedom RDS, we've tested the LCO, which is the most expensive of the three, right? Mm -hmm. And the Delta Point Pro, which is kind of in the middle between the two. Right. The Delta Point Pro is the lightest, and I'm going to go ahead and say this right now, right off the top of my head. I'm going to say it's the best of the Leupold Red Dot options. Yeah, because of the combination of features uh, and performance we got out of it uh, with its medium cost, mm -hmm. I, I think out of those three, it was the best one. It's the best balance. The reticle's reasonably crisp. It does halo out or bloom a little if you get it too bright. I don't like that you have to push the button to go up and cycle back and down, but 
that's negotiable. Uh, but in terms of weight, the reticle clarity, the general ruggedness that we've had over the years of using it, and the price point, if you're going to go loophole red dot, I'm going to go ahead and say go Delta Point Pro. It also has the fastest battery change out of any of the optics we've used. Oh, does it? Yeah, you just pop the cap, oh, yeah, put the new battery in, close it. Now, what's it the battery life like on the Delta Point Pro, though? I don't really remember. <sighs> I don't think they list it. Mm -hmm. um, I've left them on handguns for up to six months, like in storage, but you know, people who carry them, and when I was carrying one, I changed it once a month just to be proactive. It is a little tiny battery. Uh, and it is not as efficient for its size as an Aimpoint Micro, as far as battery life goes, because it does use the same CR2032 battery sure. as an Aimpoint Micro. But out of all of them from Leupold, if I was gonna pick a red dot to use, I'd did the Delta Point Pro. I would not have thought I would have picked an open emitter red dot sight, but the RDS clearly was challenging. And the um, LCO has that weird comet coming off of it and its size and weight and price. The Delta Point Pro seems to be the right middle ground. Well guys, if you're gonna go loophole in the American Made series, we're gonna go ahead and recommend the Delta Point Pro, but stay tuned for more American Made red dots in the American Made red dot series coming here on InRange. So I also want to remind you that InRange is completely Patreon supported. That means that we buy stuff to do reviews for you via Patreon supported dollars. So the only support that comes from this channel is from Patreon viewers. It's not monetized, not sponsored, nothing like that. So if you like these kind of unbiased, honest reviews, which is what we're able to do, then consider being a Patreon supporter if you're not already. If you can't, we understand. Just subscribe to one of our multiple distribution points. You can find them all at InRange.tv. Thanks for watching.